Welcome to the online service of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Ventura, California, as we celebrate Easter, the resurrection of our Lord. We invite you to join us in singing hymn 207, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When Jesus had said this, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, she had, that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the signs from our hands and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. While it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been moved away. Later that morning, she stood alone, weeping outside the tomb. When she looked inside, she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been. The angels spoke to her, asking, Woman, why are you weeping? She told them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Like Peter and the other disciples who had already gone by this time, she too has seen, but has not understood. She's still in the darkness. When she turns around, Jesus is standing there before her, and he asks, Woman, why are you weeping? Who were you looking for? She assumed he must be the gardener and begged him to tell her where the body had been laid. Finally, he called her by name, Mary. And in that moment, her eyes were opened. The light dawned and the darkness shattered. She called out to him, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Jesus cautioned her not to embrace him because he had not yet ascended, and he sent her to tell the others what was going on. Mary Magdalene returned and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Blessings to you all on this most unusual Easter. For the first time in our 131-year history at St. Paul's Episcopal Church, Ventura, we bring Easter services to you because you can't come to us. Thank you for welcoming us into your homes this morning. We've gathered up as many Easter treats for you as we could because we want to help you connect with the joy, the hope, and the glory of Easter. That may be a little difficult today, because we're without one of our most basic blessings that we usually enjoy. A blessing I don't think any of us is ever gonna take for granted again. The blessing of being together as we celebrate. Whenever we preach, we do our best to nurture spirituality, to inspire emotion, to share the gospel, and to help you connect with these ancient stories 
by showing you how the Word of God is relevant in our lives today. This is challenging in the best of times. Put a little distance between us all, and it gets even harder. Reverend Liz and I worked with our team of digital disciples to bring you the important stories and traditions of Holy Week and help you experience some of its darkness. You didn't have to reach very far to find those emotions. We're all experiencing a dark time as we isolate ourselves because of this pandemic. But now it's Easter, and we want to help you connect with the excitement, the energy, the glory, the amazing gift that Easter was to all humanity and still is to us today. So here's my plan. In this sermon, we'll explore the scripture to look for similarities between the lesson and our lives today. I'll talk about the connection between love and sacrifice, and then I'll seek to answer this important question. How can we truly celebrate Easter in this time of holy distancing? How do we celebrate Jesus coming out of the tomb when we are still closed in the cave? Let's start with the gospel lesson, the story of the resurrection from the Gospel of John. What similarities might we see between this lesson and our lives today? Well, like Mary, we come to it while it's still dark all around us. We aren't sure what's going to happen next or when things will change. And like her, we're frightened. And as much as we'd like to embrace those we've been separated from, we're told we have to keep our distance. Like her, we wait for the light to come that will shatter the darkness. We long for Jesus to call us by name and open our eyes. Our Lenten journey is now over. We started out on Ash Wednesday by inviting each one of you to make a sacrifice or a commitment in order to keep a holy Lent. Like Mary, when the angel asked her to become the mother of Jesus, Little did we know just how much each one of us would be called to sacrifice. My first message to you after the heart-wrenching decision to cancel services included a picture of our empty church and the words, this is what love looks like. Love and sacrifice go hand in hand because of our love for our neighbors, especially those who are most vulnerable we're willing to make this sacrifice. We gave up socializing, worshiping at church, going out to lunch, gathering with friends. We pray for children who can't go to school and people who can't go to work. We ask God to bless families who are separated and can't be together right now, to hold and comfort those who are unable to physically comfort one another as they face illness and endure suffering, even death, and grief. We pray for the brave and dedicated healthcare workers who show their love and sacrifice for us all. On that morning, when Mary stood in the darkness and found the stone had been rolled away, that's what love looked like, an empty tomb. God loves us that much. Today, our churches stand empty. On Easter, that's what love looks like. All of us keeping our distance, but gathered together in a different way. I've seen and heard some of the comments from people wrestling with the question, why would God make this happen? Or why would God allow this to happen to us? So I thought I'd share my perspective with you. Considering all that I know about God from my own personal experiences and from my studies, I believe God does not curse us with pandemics, but rather stands with us while we face the terrible things that sometimes come with being human and living in the world. Even at times when we are to blame for the tragedy that befalls us, I believe that God is always present, ready to help and heal, to love and bless us. I also believe that God is really good and helping good things come from bad. It seems to be one of God's favorite things to do, to bring light from darkness, joy from sadness, peace that goes beyond understanding, and life from death. God helps us to cope 
and to learn from these experiences. And God provides unexpected blessings all along the way. Some unexpected blessings can really delight us, like the blessing of having Deacon Ed with us in our worship today. Since we have to celebrate Easter online this year and we're each in our own homes anyway, why not include Deacon Ed from his new home in Washington? So the skies may be filled with clouds, but some have silver linings. And it's even been funny sometimes. One post that got my attention shared the words, this is the lentiest Lent I've ever Lented. Another had a picture of a package of peeps, you know those little marshmallow candy chicks, and they were all wearing teeny tiny little masks. I also enjoyed the one that said, darn it, Jim, I'm a pastor, not a videographer. I find that one particularly funny. <laughs> Maybe that's just me, but I do find that one funny. So how can we truly celebrate Easter in this time of holy distancing? How do we celebrate Jesus coming out of the tomb when we're still closed in that cave? We need to remember that Mary dealt with the darkness. The disciples secluded themselves for fear that the soldiers would come and take them next. Easter doesn't mean that all is well. It means that all will be well. Even with all its power, death doesn't win. Love is stronger than anything. On Easter Sunday, an empty tomb is what love looks like. Jesus overcame death and the grave, and we will too. So claim the gift of Easter with your whole being. Let it fill you from your head to your soul. Grab it with both hands and hold on to the hope that is so strong that it raised Jesus from the dead. Remember, Easter isn't for the world, it's for the people. It's for you. Its message proves that light can vanquish the darkness and life can come from death, that hope is never gone, and that love always wins. So, in the midst of the loneliness and heartache that fills our time of separation, remember, our spring will come. God, whose mighty power separated the heavens from the earth and spoke the world into being, is still with us. The light will shine. The doors will open. Hands will reach out. Hearts will be moved. Children will run and play with one another. We will embrace and enjoy each other's company again. And when that day comes, when we can once again gather together in our church, I predict the service will start late and the passing of the peace is going to take a while because we're all going to be so thrilled to be together again. Until then, this is what love looks like. Today, it looks like the church, faithfully gathered, but from our own homes. It looks like people reaching out and connecting in new ways so that we can practice the separation needed to slow this virus. We're each being called to do our part today. We're called to be faithful, to be patient, to support one another, to become digital disciples sharing the word of God and the love of God in creative ways across the miles. Today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and remember the tomb was found empty. Let's all make the sacrifices necessary to do our part to keep those tombs empty. Together we can make a difference. We can save lives. Let that be our Easter blessing, our way of sharing the love of Christ, our gift of sacrifice to one another. Stay safe. Stay prayerful and stay home. Happy Easter to you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hallelujah. What was dead shall live. What was dark shall sign. What was forgotten shall be remembered. For the Lord is risen and walks among us. Let us confidently bring before God the needs of all our world, asking God for renewal, saying, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. God of life, in gratitude and great joy, we loud you for the gifts of Christ's resurrection. In this time of illness and uncertainty, give us hope, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. On this feast day, which brings joy to all Christian believers, may we commit ourselves to work toward the unity of the church, that Christ's body may be one, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Honoring the gift of Christ's risen body, may we rise to serve all those whose needs keep them from seeing themselves as the image of God, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who have need of the gift of Easter, for all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love, for all our brothers and sisters, that death may have no power over us, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who suffer and all who mourn, and especially for those directly affected by the devastation of the COVID-19 disease, that today the Lord God will wipe away all tears, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May we be of one faith with all who have died in Christ, for our life is hid with Christ in God, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. God of life. We thank you for the mystery planted in us, the paradox of life from death and community from scattered disciples. We praise you for the dying which saves us from death and for the rising which brings us life. We pray as we live through Jesus, the risen one, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. At this point in the service, we would lift the elements and say the words of institution. Since we will not consecrate bread or wine until we can be together again, we speak these words only as a reminder of the way that Jesus instituted the Eucharist. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. During this time of separation, we will not sanctify bread and wine, but we ask God to sanctify us that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament in the form of spiritual communion, that we may serve in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day join with all the saints in the joy of God's eternal kingdom. All this we ask through, our, through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Please join us in praying. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oh, in the peace of the Lord Jesus, may Christ's light shine in your heart so that you may bring joy and the hope of Easter to others and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.